All right, today's pretty much going to review everything we already know about exponentials and logarithms from the past two units, um, but here it's going to be a specific base, and we're going to talk about the natural base. So in today's notes, we're going to cover just kind of an introduction of what the natural base and natural logs is, um, simplifying and solving natural bases, and then we're also going to get into word problems. So this is just kind of a write-up of what the natural base is. So in a perfect world, everything uses whole numbers and bases of 10, like what we've been dealing with so far. So remember, a log with nothing written there is base 10, because that's the easiest base to work with. Unfortunately, we live in the real world, um, and the logarithmic base that happens most naturally in the real world, real world is actually this irrational number, 2.718281828459. Um, I'm not going to ask you to memorize it, but I just know that it's a number that works like pi. We all know that pi is 3.1415 and so on and so forth. Well, E is the same thing. And what happens is when um, people went out in the real world and solved real world problems, um, they figured out that they needed a log with a certain base, and the base is actually that 2.71 number. So they denote it as e. So many problems will deal with the exponential e to the x, and again, that e is not a variable. It's the number 2.718. So the, um, and the inverse for that exponential is called the natural base, so that's log base e. This is the only place you'll see me refer to log or nat the natural log as log base e. Um, the way that natural log is always referred to is ln. So again, ln is the natural log. And I have no idea why the letters are reversed. It's called natural log, but it's ln. I'm assuming it's because of something of something Latin, some smart man a long time ago decided. So just know that natural log is just log base e. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with simplifying natural bases. This is going back to our last unit um, where we had to simplify all different exponentials and logs. So for this first example here, we have to remember that natural logs, I'm going to write this note down here, natural log is log base e. So if you look here, I have natural log and I have e to the 2x. So this uses my property that my bases that match cancel because this exponential is base e and this log has base e. So this just simplifies down to 2x. So the same thing here. I have natural log, which is just log base e, and I have an exponential that's a base e. So those will cancel and I'm just left with the exponent of 5. Here I have an exponential base e and a natural log or log base e. So again, since they're right next to each other, they just cancel, and I'm left with 3x. So, so far in all of our simplifying, natural log and base e cancel each other out. You're left with what's left. This problem here is slightly different. My issue here is that my the e and the natural log aren't touching each other, so I can't really use inverses yet and say, oh, they cancel out. So we're actually going to take one of our properties we already know and use it in reverse. So remember what we've done in the past when we've had exponents. So if I've had like log x to the third power, remember we'd always take that 3 and drop it down in front of the log. So we're actually going to do the opposite here. My issue is that I have this 4 blocking in between e and the natural log. So I'm going to take it and put it back inside the natural log and write it as an exponent. So I have e to the natural log of x to the fourth. And now I have my e and my natural log right next to each other. So that cancels. And this just simplifies down to x to the fourth power. So in the first three, everything canceled immediately. On this fourth example, because that four was in between them, I had to rewrite it as an exponent. And then I was able to cancel everything out. So these are your four trying your own problems. Again, remember, you need to try these problems on your own. Um, I'm not going to go over them in class, so I'm going to be calling on you guys to come up and do one of these problems at the board. So make sure you're prepared. So that's the first part we have to go over. Um, now we have a couple more things to talk about. 
So we talked about simplifying the natural base. Now we need to solve the natural base. Um, again, these, prop these problems are using the exact same properties and ideas um, that we've been doing with regular logs and exponentials. So over here I have natural log 4 plus natural log of x equals 2. Because I have this plus sign here, this tells me that I have the product property. So remember, in the product property, I'm going to rewrite my two logs as one, and I'm going to multiply their inputs. So I have the natural log of 4x equals 2. So remember, natural log is just log base e. So when you have a log set equal to a number, this is where we rewrite it as an exponential. So I have e to the second power equals 4x. Another reminder, remember e is really a number, it's not a variable. e really just stands for that 2.71 number, and it's actually programmed into your calculators. So what I need to do is I need to figure out, okay, to get x by itself, I divide by 4. And so you're going to type in e squared all divided by 4. And if you can't find the e button in your calculator... I will show you in class next time. So when I divide this and I round it to two decimal places, I get that x equals 1.85. Over here on this problem, this one's slightly different. Um, here, I'm not adding my natural log to another natural log. I'm just adding a 3 to it and then multiplying it by 2. So I'm actually all right, I forgot to type it in there, but there should be parentheses around that x plus 3. So it's 2 times the natural log of x plus 3. So for this problem, um, I actually need to get the natural log by itself. So I'm going to divide out the 2 that's with it. So I'm going to be left with a natural log of x plus 3 equals 0. And again, I'm going to take this base e and rewrite as an exponential. Hopefully by this time you guys recognize anything to the zero power is just equal to 1. So I have 1 equals x plus 3. So to get x by itself, I simply subtract 3, and I'm left with x equals negative 2. So there's two examples on how to solve problems that deal with natural logs. All right, so here's two more examples that you all need to try on your own. Um, this one over here is using the quotient property because that is a minus sign there, so remember what to do there. This one here is actually going to be um, very simple. Remember what we talked about in simplifying when a natural log and the e are right next to each other. So good luck with these two problems. All right, this is going to be the last slide. This is stuff that I just need for you to copy down before class. Um, because what we're actually going to spend most of class time working on is word problems. These word problems are going to use one of these three um, formulas, uh, and you're just going to have to read the problems, and we'll talk about which formula goes with which type of problem. So it's really important that you have the names of the formulas, um, the actual formula, and then obviously what every single letter represents. Um, you should recognize this first one. It's very similar to the first exponential formula we ever learned of the a uh, parentheses 1 plus or minus r to the t. The first two formulas you also might recognize from personal finance. These are formulas that have to go with any time you invest in something, um, and so that's what they're talking about. This last formula down here, this is a formula that goes more with chemistry. So any of the problems we talk about with science, that's where we're going to use the n equals n naught one half t to the h power. So this one half is actually the base. So we know it's always going to be decay because this is a half life. So this is um, how fast a substance decays until there's nothing left. Um, so the base is one half. So that's going to be decay. This n naught, this is n zero here. That's just a subscript. It doesn't that zero doesn't mean anything. It doesn't represent a number. Um, it's just talking about how much substance you started with. 
So again, we'll go more into the depth in these formulas um, in class time and apply them to the actual word problems. It's just important that you guys have them written down and at least a basic understanding of the different parts of them. So I will see you next time in class.